All right. Hey, how you all doing? I bet you're all really stressed right now. Here I am speaking to you from my home office and you'll notice I have my camera at slightly weird angle because uh, this gets a big picture. So there was some pictures and stuff in the background I didn't want seen. One of the things you may have been learning this week about practicing at home. And as I say that, I'm going to move the picture of me up because that is going to help me look at the camera more and look at you as I'm doing this. <laughs> so um, hopefully you've all gotten settled into telehealth and have found a HIPAA compliant um, platform to do the work on. I know for me, I had set up VC a week ahead of time and was clapping myself on the back, but um, they, it crashed the first day. And now I'm doing video chat through uh, Simple Practice, which has been good. Although it's a little weird for me because I have uh, therapy notes, um, which has not integrated yet, which is a little frustrating, but it is what it is. So I just wanted to kind of um, check in with you about a few things that are out there. One is that we cannot them that their regulations are saying that we don't have to use HIPAA compliant um, platforms. And although there is waivers out there, it is still best that you use the HIPAA compliant platforms. You know, if you get stuck and it's a senior and the only thing they know is FaceTime and you document that they understand the privacy stuff then go ahead. But um, as general practice with your clients, just be using uh, VC or Doxy or Zoom with a business associate agreement. And just so you know, they are way backed up now. I had tried that and I wasn't able to get the BAA. Um, and it's $200 a month, although 10 people can share it. So um, that's what a lot of people are doing. Um, so get that set up, get your space set up. Um, you'll notice now I have, well, other hand, oop, boop, boop, uh, a light in the back there because when I was doing some evening sessions, the lighting behind me was kind of crappy and I can't open the curtains behind me because it looks into my neighbor's house. Um, so just those things, um, you know, dealing with animals. Um, I've sort of let that go myself this week because I have cats and I, you know, I've actually enjoyed doing a few sessions with a cat on my lap and my clients have enjoyed meeting one of my cats. Um, it can be frustrating when they use the litter box right outside the door during session, but most of my clients are taking that all with a, a grain of salt and a sense of humor. And it's been nice for me to meet some of my clients, uh, animals and people. So that's good. Um, in California, what do you need to do telehealth? This is different from state to state, although I would imagine some of the stuff is the same. I'm bringing up my information. You need to get informed consent from your client. It doesn't have to be written, although written is always best when you're documenting something. Um, they have to understand the limitations of telehealth services. They have to have your license or registration number. Um, and you need to document reasonable efforts to ascertain the contact information of relevant resources in the geographic area where the patient is um, residing during the call. So on my telehealth consent form, I asked them to put in an emergency contact person and also information on the nearest hospital. So that's all documented in my files. Um, in California, what you have to do each time is verbally obtain and document the client's name and address at the time of the session. So verify they're where you think they are. They're at home. Um, with everything that's going on, clients, you know, some of the clients I work with have been moving around. So that's important. Um, you're also assessing whether they're appropriate for telehealth. Obviously, if they're a high-risk client, telehealth may not be the best option for them. That's okay, you know, but you need to find other care for them. And then utilize best practices for telehealth, which, of course, means using a HIPAA-compliant platform in which you have a business associate agreement with the provider. So um, I'm gonna post a blog post with some information and some links to the forms I developed, which were based on forms other people developed because like many of us, I pulled this together really quickly. Um, there is varying information about crossing state lines. Uh, what I am hearing in general is um, it's based on the state in which the client res resides. So I'm in California and um, if I have a client 
uh, in uh, Florida. I have to check Florida's rules. Uh, some of the states, like I know New Jersey has waived uh, the rules. Uh, check the website of the, the state in which you're looking because some very concretely say online that they are not waiving those rules. So um, there was a federal waiver for telemedicine and uh, a lot of places think that we're different than telemedicine. So just verify it because if you are practicing outside your scope, um, or the laws, your liability insurance does not cover you. Um, I know my liability insurance was very clear on that when I verified with them that they would cover telehealth. Uh, you know, some other things, making sure you know what's behind you in your screen. Sometimes the screen that's showing up, you know, for you that shows you is this big, but what they're seeing is a little bigger. What I've used is I do a little FaceTime check ahead of time to just see what my FaceTime screen shows. And then I use that to um, gauge what they're saying. Of course, you want to be in a space where you have some privacy and, um, you know, nobody can hear you. Um, headphones are good both for uh, helping with privacy and uh, it helps, you know, with the, um, you know, not hearing kind of other stuff and uh, better sound quality. I also have a microphone that I had already had that I use, which supposedly helps with sound. Internet connectivity is really important, and I am very grateful that I had upped my home's internet connectivity speed a few weeks before all of this happened, so I've been good on my end. Uh, some of my clients have had problems uh, because obviously the systems are very taxed right now. You know, privacy for clients is also an issue, so uh, they may be able to use a phone. I've known some therapists that have, you know, done phone sessions with clients uh, while they're going for a walk or video sessions while they're sitting in their car. So that's something for you to work out with each client because this could be a, a few months that we're doing this. Um, I'm in California and they're sort of saying two to three months, so we don't really know. Uh, there's a lot of different information out there, so it really remains to be seen, of course. Uh, what else do I want to tell you? Uh, I think that's it. I mean, I think, you know, just also giving yourself a break that we're going through uh, the same things that the clients are going through and we're holding a lot ourselves. So finding ways to take care of yourself. I spent some of yesterday and today dealing with my pandemic uh, Gen X music list and in between sessions, since I have my headphones on anyway, sometimes I listen to it and, you know, relax. Um, I've also been trying to get out for a walk every day, which has been hard because it's rainy here. And I've taken a couple of rainy day walks just because it's been really important to just get a little space and air. So check out my blog post for some more links, especially if you're local to California and um, take care of yourselves as we do this. And I'm sure we're all going to be learning a lot as we do this. And um, I hope that you share your comments with me. I'd love to hear them or other topics you want me to cover. All right, take care.